So, we talk about the source of all waves is a vibration. Good. So you've got to have something wiggling in the first place. And a vibration is just a wiggle in time. But a wave is a wiggle in time in space. It can travel. And I want to emphasize with this thing more so that uh, through wave motion, you can propagate something like energy or a disturbance. So, you know, I, I vibrate this end. And you can see it displace. But the individual medium or the matter itself is just vibrating. So if you just, again, focus on this one, as the wave goes by, it just vibrates up and down. So the, the matter is vibrating, but a wave trans can transmit energy or matter, a disturbance. It's, uh, that's what, the wave is what's propagated or the disturbance, if you will, not the medium itself. So when I talk and I displace air here, it's not that same parcel of air that's just set to wiggling and it moves. No, it runs into its neighbors, which run into its neighbors. It's like a domino effect. I wanted to reemphasize that. What were the two types of waves? Longitudinal and transverse. Give me an example of transverse. Light. You know, the... It's like this. The disturbance, the matter moves up and down, but the wave moves side to side. They're transverse to each other. Well, give me an example of longitudinal sound. sound. They're both moving in the same direction, the disturbance and the wave, the vibration and the wave. Good. Okay. No, it's not clickers yet. <laughs> little animation, the... Author provided. Have a bob on a pendulum here. It's at equilibrium. And if I pull it down, I displace it away from equilibrium. What do we call that distance? Amplitude. Amplitude. So if I let go, it, there's a restoring force pulling it back to the middle, but it overshoots and then it compresses and stores energy and then shoots back. And you can see there, some of the terms for review. The distance from here, the first crest, to the second crest, they label it as period. That's the time it takes to go from there to there, to get back to the same position, one cycle. The distance it traveled, we would call a what? A wavelength. That's one wavelength. Uh, the, the period is the time to complete one cycle. How far have you traveled in one cycle, one period? One wavelength. See at the bottom, you could do it from trough to trough. And there's the amplitude labeled. It's, it's the distance from equilibrium. Don't get confused. It's not the distance from the very top to the very bottom. That would be twice the amplitude. Do you see that? It's, just, it's the uh, distance from dis, uh, equilibrium. So let's reset it. Well, let's see. What was the period? Two seconds. Do you see how that is? Let's see here. This one's at one. When that, that crest starts. When we get to the next crest, one cycle later, we're at three seconds. So the difference, three minus one, is two. The period's two. What's the frequency? What's the relationship between frequency and period? They're, yeah, they're reciprocal, inverse. So if the period's two, the frequency's one over two half, half a hertz. That means it goes up and down. Think of hertz as cycles per second. That's how I'll say it. Cycles. So if hertz is a half, it completes half a cycle per second. That might help you. If I displace it a different distance, a little less amplitude, how do you think the period will change? It doesn't change. Amplitude doesn't affect the period and the frequency. And then what did amplitude correspond to? Yeah, volume or how loud or intense the sound or light is. 
if it's being displaced more, just think of the air. It might vibrate at the same rate, but if you vibrate it more, <laughs> it's going to impinge on your ear and sound louder. Maybe that's how you can remember. So amplitude doesn't affect frequency and uh, period. So there, that was a cute little animation to review. How about this one? You got a little leaf here, or you can think of yourself as a boat on top of a water wave. We'll just play it here. So, well, you see the amplitude there? You draw a line through the middle like this. That would be the equilibrium position. So whoosh, up to there is the amplitude. You hit play. The water waves go by. Whoosh, there. There. The, that time interval from now to now is the period. It's how long it... You can be sitting on a dock, right? Or you're in your ship, and you can count the seconds a wave passes you like that. That gives you the period. So you can immediately uh, invert it and get the frequency. They, tell you, they show you that here. The frequency is 0.26 hertz. Yeah, it's kind of small. 0.26 hertz. Let's make it easy. A quarter. 0.25. A quarter. If the frequency is a quarter, what's the period? Now you're getting it. So it takes four seconds. I don't know. Let's see. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. Hey, what do you know? If I change the wavelength, I'm going to make the wavelength smaller. They're going to get shorter. What do you expect to happen? So they physically look shorter. Let's hit play. Rink. 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 See, the waves come by more quickly. So yeah, the frequency increased. We discussed that. The relationship between wavelength and frequency is, is essentially, well, it, essentially it is, wave velocity. Velocity is distance over time. That's what wavelength times frequency gives us. Because it's wavelength, distance, divided by the period. Period's on the bottom. And the, the period's less time, too. It takes less time for it to go by. Any questions? What do you think will happen? There's a slider to increase the wave velocity. What do you think will happen if I increase it? It'll increase the velocity. Good! I'm just <laughs> Think the frequency will increase? Let's just see, shall we? Go for the gusto. Did the frequency value change? I didn't even notice. This, it's about 0.89 right now, if you can read it. Let's slow back down. Yeah, the frequency is now 0.4. And you can see that visually. It's not coming by as fast. But the size of the waves didn't change. So the way you would do this, let's see, to change the wave velocity, what if we went from fresh water to salt water? They have different densities, you well know, and we're going to learn more, uh, probably Friday or Monday, that that changes the wave velocity. You change the medium that the sound's traveling through, or the wave, the wave velocity changes. If you increase the temperature, well, you've, you've affected the medium, the matter, and so that'll change the wave velocity. So that's a way you can change wave velocity. And in doing so, it's the same size waves in this example. But if they're coming faster at you, well then, yeah, you're gonna, they're going to hit you at a higher frequency. Everything we did here, I didn't bore you with it, but if you multiplied wavelength times frequency, you'll always get the wave velocity listed, or vice versa. Oh, yeah, another animation. I guess we already discussed it. There's a transverse wave. Most people get that. Longitudinal, since it's hard to draw. There's a visual representation for you. In slow-mo. <laughs> and it says I can highlight one of the coils. Can you see the red one right there? See how it, it moves back and forth? It gets crunched together and then pushed this way, and then it spreads back out. But it never really covers any distance. It always kind of stays in the same spot. But the, the disturbance or the wave seems to travel 
like with my cursor here. It messes that coil, but then it keeps gong going. Hopefully those will help you. We're not ready for that one yet. Okay. Oh, that's a good question. The wavelength of that one, it's harder to draw those, so we usually represent all waves with these transverse looking sine curves. But I wish this one let me pause. But see that distance between the compressions? I might as well tell you, this is called a compression. This is called a rare faction. They're listed in chapter 20. This is a compression, and this is a rare faction. Fancy words for smushed together, spread apart. The distance between those. You can think of, say, the compressions as a crest. There's one. And here's another. So the distance from compression to compression is one wavelength. And that doesn't change here. So it's not, not from crest to crest. Yeah, think of this as a slinky. The wave isn't moving up and down like this, like in a transverse wave, even though it looks like a sine wave. This is, think of this as a slinky. You can also do a wavelength from this rare faction to this one, same distance, one wavelength. And that's not changing. Oh, I did bring my slinky. So let's see. You can see the distance from one compression to the other. That's a wavelength. If I go faster, I should say at a higher rate, higher frequency. Please tell me you can see the compressions well enough. The wavelength got smaller, didn't it? It's just a lot harder to draw those. <laughs> Groovy. Well, let's start interfering waves then. Where's my notes? Over here. Matter does not like sharing its space with other matter. That's why you guys are all sitting in different chairs. Waves could care less. Because, you know, you can send a wave this way. It can reflect and come back. So let's send them at the same time, right? Oh, well, they're happy. They just pass through each other. I just can't wiggle it that far. Less amplitude, Adam. No. No. They reflect, they come back, whoop. So with one wave, you can focus on the amplitude. If I go up, it's roughly that high. comes back. If I try to do the same thing on this side, that amplitude will come in, and the wave just passes by. It's happy as can be. But the matter here, the rod, it's being deflected, disturbed by both waves. If one wave is trying to make it go up, and the other wave's trying to make it go up, what do you think will happen? It'll go up, but twice as much. So I'll, I'll try that, and then you can ask. <laughs> Whoop. See how it gets bigger in the middle? Whoop. Yeah. Glad you asked. Before I do, this is called superposition. It's in your book. Superposition. It means super above, on top, like a superscript, like your exponents. The positions just kind of add on top of each other. But there's two ways to superimpose. You can do it like this. This is called constructive interference. Constructive interference. That's where they add together. They're in phase with each other. One's up while the other one's up. It's like you got crests coming together. I'll draw a picture on the board. But let's do the opposite, where one's up and one's down that come together. This would be called destructive interference. They're still going to superimpose, but if one wave is trying to make it go up while the other one's trying to make it go down, what will happen to the rod? you got two forces, right, in equilibrium? So it won't move. For that split second when the, the two waves pass by that one rod, There'll be no displacement. It'll be at equilibrium. Let's see how well I can do. Uh, this one up, that one down. You see?
Well, it worked for uh, the first time until I whacked it. Did you notice? It seems like they just kind of, the two waves change position. Vroom, and keep going. But watch that middle one. It doesn't really move much. Doink. Right there in the middle. Doink. So let's draw those. Two conditions. So, super position, and you can have constructive interference. The waves are interfering or destructive. The waves are interfering. Interference. This one, the waves are in phase when they come together. And this one, they're out of phase. And this is right in the way. Let's see. It's not quite in the way as many people know. <laughs> so this one, it's like you got one wave coming up, and this one coming up. And when they pass in the middle, we saw what happens. Ooh, twice as high. And then they continue on. And vice versa. This one, one's up, one's down. So when they come together, they negate each other. And you just get for that moment when they're together. See how they destroy each other? Hence destructive interference and constructive. Now as soon as they pass by each other, whoosh, we saw that they come back. This one will continue on over here, and this one will continue on over there. Do you see how these are out of phase? Good, and these are in phase. Now, th this is perfect or ideal constructive and destructive interference. If the amplitudes aren't the same, exactly the same, if this one's a little bigger than this one, they still add. This would just be a little taller. What if this one was a little bigger than that one? What do you think happens? Yeah, it's the net effect. They won't completely cancel because this has a larger down effect than the other one has on up. So you'll get whatever those add together as, which will look roughly like <laughs> that. You'll have a little blurb. It's still destructive interference, just not complete destructive interference. And all kinds of waves interfere. Transverse, longitudinal, light, sound, water, they all do. I got an example here so you can hear it. A function generator, and that frequency comes out of this. It's just one frequency and this speaker at the same time. They're in phase with each other. This speaker, you know, speakers push out and then come back. So they're going like this, so they do that to the air. Well, this one's going out when this one goes out. They're in phase. So they're doing this thing. And so this one wave will travel to your ear. This wave will travel to your ear at the speed of sound in air. Wave velocity, it's the same for both. Which one takes longer to get to you? Yeah, it has more distance to travel. Do you see that? So by the time they get to your head, the two waves come together, they're going to interfere. And it could be like this. It could be like this. It depends on where they're at. This one travels to you. This one takes a little longer. By the time they match up, which one are they going to be? So when I do this, you can move. Well, I'll move it first. Let's just do it. See if you can hear any interference. I don't hear a change right now. No change. Some people notice it more when I go faster. Can you hear that? Yeah. Could you hear it? You heard some, it sounded like wah wah. Well, that was. It would add sometimes and be a little louder, and sometimes it would 
a cancel and be a little softer. We didn't hear complete destructive because this wave goes everywhere and there's reflections. And so that one might not cancel out exactly there. But that's interference. And it really does matter if you're a, an, a, what do they call it, audiophile, Those people that really are into sound, where you place your speakers in a room. And you've got to worry about reverberations and echoes, reflections off of things, whether they get absorbed and it sounds dead, or it reflects off and it's really lively. And concert halls find a nice balance between those. But like this, you can do this with speakers on your laptop, plug two speakers in, Google, you can find the websites that will produce pitches, and move your speakers around, aim them at each other, change the distance. There's a fun one. Because this is a certain frequency, which means it has a certain wavelength. So does this one. Let's see, I put it at 1100 hertz. 1100 hertz. Do anybody happen to know what the speed of sound in air is? Ooh, very good. You're right. We'll be more a little more realistic. It changes with temperature. 330 is what I memorized too, but yeah, that's at zero degrees Celsius. So at room temperature. It tra the wave travels at about 340 meters a second. That's you know, from here to there, whoosh, to your ear. The frequency is this. What's the wavelength? Figure it out. Let's get a visual of how, how long these waves are. Here's your clue. The formula, the relations, whoops. Wavelength times frequency. What is that wavelength? I'll help you out some more. <laughs> but I don't have a calculator, so somebody do it for me. Now somebody hum the Jeopardy theme song. Do, 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 do. So just be the, the speed over the frequency. Point three oh nine? Oh, couldn't it have been four oh nine? Four oh nine. No, let's see. <laughs> Point three, and what would the units be? Yeah, we've done all standard units here. This is per second. We've got meters per second. So yeah, it comes out to meters. So a meter is about like this, so a third of it. That's the wavelength. So you can kind of visualize. One cycle. Well, that's too fast. By the time it goes a meter, it's done it three times, right? One, two, three. Do you see that? You got an idea of the wavelength. Well, OK, there's a wavelength. So what if we grab that speaker and put it right over here? That's symmetric. They should match up nicely. But if you put this one on a, like a half a wavelength in front, do you see how they'd be out of phase? So they won't match up. It's kind of like this. I can wiggle this and send waves this way. And they travel. They reflect and come back. I don't have to wiggle both sides. I can let the reflection wiggle for me. And certain frequency comes and it keeps going. And sometimes it can look messy but it's based on this length. I can only fit certain waves in here. Let's do it maybe slower. And if I match that up when it comes back, oh, there we go. This is called a standing wave because it doesn't look like it's traveling this way, does it? But what's really happening, I keep disturbing this end. So a wave travels this way. It reflects and comes back, but we're constructively interfering, aren't we? They're always in phase. And they reinforce each other. It looks like it's just staying put. We call it a standing wave. See, see this rod right here? It doesn't even look like it's moving. 
So standing waves are caused by this interference. And there's some good pictures in your book. But basically what happens, if you send a wave forward, it can reflect off that side and come back. And then again, and back. And it's happy. So we call it a standing wave, and it's caused by interference, constructive interference. You can vibrate it faster, can't you? I've done that. And you could get something like this. Then it'll reflect and go back. We call these different modes, different modes. You can go for another one. Let's see. You get the idea. You can have one, one even more slow. You can just go big bump, reflects, and comes back. And so everything has different modes of resonance. That's the word we're going to want to know. Resonance. They want to vibrate at certain frequencies. We'll discuss this more. But that's what's going on with a standing wave. You have found the frequency it likes to vibrate at, one of these. They can be different resonant modes. This is the lowest frequency. See how it has a long wavelength? The wavelength would be this. From here, oh, that's only half of it, right? I've only gone up once. That would be a wavelength. Do you see that? So this is only half of a wave. It's just the crest. You need a crest and a trough. This one, what's the wavelength? Yeah, the whole thing. Do you see that? This one, the wavelengths from there to there. And this one, there to there. So interference, constructive interference. We get standing waves when they reflect back on themselves. And they form different resonance modes. This one, some of you have probably heard of it, is called the fundamental. Do we have any uh, people that sing or play instruments? I, I don't play any normal instrument. <laughs> I, I play like, I've played a washtub bass and a nose flute, and I made a French horn out of a garden hose, you know, those type of things. Uh, but I sing, so I, I at least appreciate music. Raise your hand again. Instruments or sing? Oh, it's usually more than that. Okay, only a few handful. Of, have you heard of fundamental? Anyway, that's what it is. It's the lowest one. Do you see, how do you think the frequency compares between this fundamental and the next mode? I tried to draw out the scale. How do the wavelengths compare? They're different. How, what's the ratio between them? Half. Yeah, this one, fit, it, there's a half a wave from here to here. And this one has a whole wave from there to there. So yeah, this wavelength's half. We're traveling in the rods or a violin string, a guitar string, a drum head. You can make waves in it. So we're not changing the medium. So we're not changing the wave velocity. But we just cut the wavelength and it, we doubled it. We doubled the wavelength. Uh, if you went from here to here, it's twice as big. So the frequency is twice as slow, half the frequency. So the, my point is, the, you see the ratio difference between wavelength is 1 to 2? So is frequency. This vibrates twice as quickly as that one. This one vibrates three times as quickly as that one. Four times as that one. So if this were 100 hertz, that's its frequency. What's this frequency? Is it vibrating faster or slower? Faster. So the frequency should go up by a factor of two. 200 hertz. 
This one? Yeah, it's three times as fast as the fundamental. So this would be 300 hertz. And this one, 400 hertz. You with me? OK. There's another concept of interference, and that's the Doppler effect. You guys have probably heard of the Doppler effect, I reckon. You know when you hear a car or a train go by and you kind of hear that Well, the car is not changing frequency. It's a constant frequency, like this ball. I put a buzzer inside. So the frequency is not changing. You convinced? But who wants to catch it? Are you hearing the frequency change? In the back. Raise your hand if you've heard it change. Good. We'll, we'll turn it off then. <laughs> Oy. That's the Doppler effect. This is not changing the waves it puts out. It puts them out at the same rate, whatever frequency, annoying frequency that is. But it's moving. That's the Doppler effect. So to your ear, the receiver of these waves, they're meeting your ear at different rates. That's why it sounds like the frequency shifts to you. It's a real effect. The, the source isn't changing, but you can literally measure a difference between fr uh, whether it's coming at you or away from you. And it changes depending on whether, I mean, which way it shifts, whether it's coming towards you or not. So and I've got a different buzzer here that I'm just going to spin around. As the waves are, as the buzzer's coming towards you, the waves this puts out, you know, it's happy. Dum, dum, dum. And they pass your ear. Dum, dum. But if, if this is moving towards you whoosh, while it's emitting the waves, what are the waves in the front going to do? They're going to bunch up clo cl closer together. They interfere. And they're going to pass your ear more frequently. So you'll hear a shift in the frequency higher. Then the reverse is true when it comes back around and comes away from you. It's moving that way. So the wave fronts at your ear will do what? Lengthen. They'll be farther apart. Because it makes one, boom, but then it moves. It makes one, the next one from over here, boom. See how they're going to be spread out by the time they reach you? So let's see if you hear it. You hear that wah wah? And the faster I spin it, I guess I can spin it this way too, the greater the shift. So I don't hear much right now. A little. I'm glad you trust the rope. <laughs> That's the Doppler effect. A perceived change in the frequency, even though it's not. I got some animations, but due to time, I'll do them next time. Uh, this works with light also, any kind of wave. Um, let me end with this. And yeah, I'll start with some clicker questions next time. I think we covered enough material to ask you questions. Here's another way to look at this. Think of these two brads here, <coughs> excuse me, as a, a disturbance, a vibration, a source. So they're going to emit waves. Here's the waves. It's just like these speakers. If your head is right here on the left, when those come together, let's see what happens. Overlap them. And look at that. If you're over here, right there, do you see how both line up? Constructive interference, it sounds loud. But what if your head is over here? Do you see how they're out of phase? Because th this one has had to travel a half a wavelength longer, farther than this one. So they get out of phase at that point. Back in phase. And over here, out of phase. So... 
Here's a different version. One sound source. They emit those wave fronts out. But let's shift it to two sources. So this one and this one emit their own waves. And do you see how the wave fronts overlap? You can think of these bands as, say, they're out of phase and they cancel each other out. So if you were sitting anywhere along this line, it'd sound quieter. But anywhere over here or here or here, they add together and it sounds louder. And if you change the distance between the speakers, not the wavelength, they're still emitting the same waves, but let's just separate them more a little. You get even more interference. But I think that shows the patterns nicely. So next time you're driving by and you see fence posts, and they, they seem to get that moiré effect, it's called. That's because they're interfering in and out of phase. It's kind of cool. So I'll see you next time.